Hello, welcome back. I am so excited for today's video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm really happy you're here and we are going to do an updated houseplant tour. It's been about four months since my last video. I will link that up here if you have not seen it. And my plants have just grown like crazy. I'm really excited to show you all the plants. What's currently going on in my plant room, I did rearrange it. I downsized a little bit. I changed some things around, so I'm really excited to just show you guys what my plants are currently looking like. Yeah, I'm just really excited for this video. This is Luna. You might see her and a couple other cats throughout this video. They're very cuddly, and since I'm in here, they're in here right now. Before I get started, I will say I have, I haven't done a final count, but I have around, I would say 200 plants, give or take. So we are heading into fall, into the colder season, and most of my plants are currently inside. I had several outside during the summer months, so they are moved in and they are in my dining area. And I'll take you through some other areas of my home as well that has some plants. I'm just gonna show you my entire collection. This video is specifically going to be all about the house plants. I'm gonna show you all of my plants, what they look like, I'll tell you their names and just show you them up close. And I am gonna make a part two of this video and part two is going to go into more detail about my current setup, like the shelving, the lights. If you have questions about anything at all, definitely let me know down below. It is a little bit cloudy today, but I do have all of my lights on. So I was hoping the sun would be out for this video because when the sun shines in on my moss poles, it's so beautiful. But we have cloudy weather the next several days and I wanna go ahead and film this video. So so don't mind if it appears a little bit gloomy. It's just kind of really overcast and cloudy today. This video is also going to be broken up into chapters and two different sections. So I will have a separate section for my moss poles, my Ikea cabinet. I have two big plant shelves, one here and one in front of you that you can't see and a different corner. And then I will split it up into some other areas of my home as well. So I will make chapters so you can skip around, but I really hope you enjoy and I can't wait to show you my houseplant collection. So you can see I have an entire wall dedicated to moss poles now. My goal was to get them all together. I do have some poles that are on the shelf behind me that aren't here. But eventually, you know, I will probably have to move some of these and spread them out as they grow. But for right now, I'm just really excited that they're kind of mostly all together. I have poles of varying sizes. Some have been on the pole for over a year, close to a year and a half. Some have been on the pole only for like a couple weeks. So some are very mature and some are not very mature, but I'm looking forward to all the growth. The very first one is a neon pothos. And it's actually starting to finally climb. It's been a while on the pole. I probably had this plant on a pole for a good seven, eight months. And this was actually all cuttings I took from my normal, regular neon pothos plant that trails and I will show you. So the cuttings definitely took a long time to establish, but it's finally starting to climb. I have a few vines in there. And once it starts climbing, they usually grow pretty fast. I find epipremnum plants to grow and climb very well. Next to the Neon Pothos is going to be my Philodendron Splendid. And it is working on a new leaf that you can kind of see behind that lead one. And it's been on the pole for a little while now. I would say probably for like four or five months. And I ended up propagating it over the winter last winter. And I put it on a pole after I moved here. So it hasn't been on the pole too long, but you can see that it's climbing pretty well. This next pole is my Monstera adansonii. And I've done a couple videos of this plant on my channel. It is working currently on a new leaf. It will get much bigger. This is the current leaf size and it is huge, you guys. It is very big and I am just so happy to see this plant fenestrating and growing bigger. It is attaching into the pole very well. So this was a chop and extend that I did and I have some poles that are still on plastic. I am transferring them all to wire because for stability. And my Adansonii was actually a pole that is still on plastic on the bottom. And I'm slowly transferring it onto wire. So I do have some videos I did on this if you want to 
kind of learn how I'm transferring this plant onto wire. I will link one of those videos up here so you can check out my Monstera Adansonii process if you are curious about it. So once it reaches the top of that pole, I am going to chop it again and get rid of the bottom half that is still plastic. This next pole is my Epipremnum Marble Queen. And this is going to be a chop and extend project that I'm going to do very, very soon. It has gotten so big. The leaf size on this plant, do you see the size of those leaves? This plant has grown so, so well, and I'm really excited for this plant. This Epipremnum Marble Queen is actually three vines, and you can see towards the bottom how it is pretty much, you know, like bushier. And I have one vine that's more of a snow queen that is growing. And I have another vine here in the middle that is finally catching up a little bit. So my goal was to let these three vines get past the halfway point, which it is slowly getting there. I think I'm gonna let this strand grow one or two more leaves. And this one looks like it is attaching into the top portion where I had extended it before. So once those grow, I will chop it there and do the same method that I did for my Adansonii and slowly get it off of this plastic pole because plastic is way too wobbly. And <laughs> yeah, I really want this plant to continue growing and maturing. This next pole is my Epipremnum Cebu Blue or Cebu Blue, I should say. It is one of my favorite up and coming poles. I just love the silvery blue tone on plants. Like you cannot beat that. This plant is absolutely gorgeous and is actually starting to grow and attach into the moss fairly well. And I feel like it's gonna climb and get fenestrations probably in a few more months, hopefully sooner. A lot of my poles, I have one lead vine that sort of matures and grows faster to support the plant. And then the rest of the vines will slowly catch up, but I do have a lot of vines in there. So I'm really, really happy and excited to see this plant climbing. This next poll I have done several videos on as well. This is my Philodendron Micans. These leaves are just velvety and gorgeous and just so beautiful. They are a pretty decent size. Some of them are close to six inches. I just love that deep, dark velvety color. The backside is beautiful on these uh, plants. It is very hard to get this plant to trail down, I am finding, because the vines can snap very easily. I do have a video where I chopped some of my top cuttings and I did start them on a new pole that I will show you. I wish I did not start this plant on plastic, but I did not know. And I love philodendron micans. This is not my only micans. I will show you another long trailing basket as well. But this is definitely one of my favorite plants. Beside my micans, right here in the center, this is my Monstera Sultipicana, and this is officially my tallest moss pole. I don't know the exact height, and I am expecting a fenestrated leaf any day now. I feel like it's attaching into the moss well, the vine is starting to get thicker, so I am expecting this plant to fenestrate soon. I have one lead vine, and then I have so, so, so many in this pot. I have several that are starting to climb and catch up. So it will be a pretty full pole once it reaches the top. I probably will chop and extend once it reaches the top because I don't know if I want to extend on top of this again. So that is that section all done. And so this section over here, I have plants in front and plants in back. And a lot of these are on, you may notice like a plastic like clear pole. Those are actually a grow pole by the company Thickly. And I do really love their moss poles and I am going to be using them a lot more. I do love my wire poles, but I love the look and ease of these Thickly poles and they retain moisture a lot better in my space. So if you notice these plastic poles with the clear backing, that's what those are. And I have several plants that I started on those pretty recently, so they haven't really grown and matured yet. So I'll take you through a look at all of these. Starting here in the front, you will notice this Syngonium Albo. I actually just transplanted my other pot that I had into here. So it is very, very full. I just think you can't beat the variegation on this plant. It is absolutely stunning. I will be extending this one soon and I love it. I actually had this plant on a pole. I did a video on it way back in my, on my channel and I accidentally snapped the vine, but it has regrown 
and this is kind of what it looks like now. I have chopped and propped this plant and I added a small plant into here that was a little bit more variegated. So I have a mixture of all green variegation, all sorts of colors, but I absolutely love this plant. Behind the elbow is my Philodendron Glorious. And this one is still growing pretty well for me. This was just one plant that I ended up propagating. So I do have a couple vines in here and it looks like one vine is leading like all my other ones. It does have a new growth point here. The Glorious is similar to the Splendid, but it is different. And these leaves get huge and pillowy one day. I honestly can't wait, I'm really excited. I have another couple vines there. It's growing a little bit weird on the pole, I think just from where it was before, it was a little bit squished. I am gonna rearrange their position so that they can get some of this forward light. This is a Plant Spectrum Grow Light by Mother Life Official and I love their lights. I have this one and I actually have another one. So I am going to kind of mix them around so they can kind of share some of the good light, you know, being in the front row. And this one here on a thickly pole, this is one of my imports that I did with Root Greenhouse. This is a Monstera Esqueleto. So I have a couple videos on my channel where I imported these plants and I shared my process of rehabbing them and potting them up. And it is finally now starting to push out a growth point there. The, these are all the original leaves, so it has not grown a leaf in my care. And the yellowing on this one has pretty much stayed the same. So these are all the import leaves, but I'm really excited to get this plant growing and getting these huge leaves. I'm just really excited for this plant. Back behind him, this is my Jess Sienna Pothos, and I do have a trailing basket. These were cuttings I took off of mine because I wanted one to climb. You can't really tell from the leaves on this one, but the variegation pattern is very unique, and I'll show you my trailing basket. You can see it better, but I really, really wanted a climbing plant of this and I may take a couple more like variegated strands and add it back in here. I don't know if I'm happy with the amount that I added in. I think I added in three or four, but we'll see. I might add another one and it's taken a while to climb, but I think it's a beautiful pothos. I love it. It's a little bit harder to find if you can get your hands on it. I think it's beautiful. This next one in front on a thickly pole, this is the other Adansonii import. So this one is a variegated Adansonii and it's grown three leaves in my care. So it's grown this one, this one, this one, and it is working on a new leaf. And the rest of the leaves are the import leaves. It is growing very well. It is growing much faster than the Esqueleto right next to it. And I love the variegation on these leaves. I think it's very beautiful. And I'll have to extend this one soon too. This next plant behind this one is my Philodendron Majestic. This is a newer plant in my collection. And it hasn't done anything yet since I purchased it. I got it at a plant shop local to me. And there's a new growth point there. It's just is slowly, I think, just acclimating and working on the root system. But the Majestic is a hybrid of a sorteroy and a varicosum. So I think they're just naturally slow growers, but I think it's beautiful. I can't wait for it to start climbing. It's just very slow. It really hasn't done anything yet. Here in the back, you can see, I am going to redo this plant at some point. I, <laughs> this is a plastic pole that I kind of shaped more flat. This is my Raffida for a hay eye, and I don't like the way that it's grown. I started trailing the vines back down and I don't like it. I actually might put it on a wood plank and just get rid of this pole. It's gonna be a project that I'll probably do one day, but yeah, I just don't like the way it's growing and it's kind of small. It stopped growing largely as once it reached the top and I can't extend on it anymore because it is plastic, unfortunately. So that is a pole that I am going to be redoing. Here in the front is my beautiful Epipremnum panatum albo. And this plant is absolutely gorgeous, you guys. All right, I took it down so you could kind of see it in full. So I have several vines in here. This is my only plant of it now. I did add my main pot back into here and it's starting to fenestrate and get those gorgeous split leaves. I have like creamy leaves, some white leaves. I just absolutely love this moss pole. I think it's beautiful and I just adore this plant so much. I think it's gonna be one of my favorite poles coming up here. I just, I just think it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous plant and I can't wait to see it climb. Here in the back, these are the top cuts I took of my Philodendron Mikan's moss pole and you can kind of see the new growth. It did revert back to being juvenile 
and it's starting to climb and grow a little bit bigger again. So I think the plant itself, these top cuts just didn't have enough roots to really support these big leaves, which in turn, it just kind of reverted. So that's okay. At least I'll have like a micans growing on a wire pole instead of a plastic pole now. And yeah, I think next time if I take cuttings, I'll just make sure that it has enough roots to sustain like a chop for it to continue growing and maturing. But yeah, they did kind of revert back to small leaves. This plant in front is my variegated heartleaf philodendron. It is on a thick leaf pole. I actually just put this on a thick leaf pole the other day and it was on one of my wire poles, but I took it off because I put it on like a really large pole and I just didn't think it was necessary for this plant. So I love the variegation and I can't wait for this one to start climbing. I think the heart leaves are just beautiful. Next to that one is my Amedrium Medium Silver. This is the newest leaf that it just gave me. I think this plant is beautiful. It's like the Cebu Blue in a way. It has that gorgeous like silvery blue tone to it. It is a bit of a slower grower in my opinion. It didn't get the best light, so I think it probably didn't really grow that well because of that, but I am excited to at least see this new leaf finally, and I'm excited to see this plant climb. I think it's so cool, like the unique texture and the color and everything. I just adore this plant and I can't wait to see it get bigger. This next pole in the back, this, uh, this is one of my first poles that I did. And this is just my regular Hartley philodendron and it is on a plastic pole. And I have some vines at the top that are growing way above like the pole. So I don't know what I'll do with this plant eventually. This pole is actually very, very unsteady. The pole is not centered in the pot, so it leans. So I actually do have this plant attached to the wall with a clip right here to help support it because I can't water this plant without it leaning. So unfortunately, I don't really like how unsteady it is. So at some point, I think I might end up redoing this pole. I don't really know what my plan is long term. And ever since I moved and the vine started climbing, this is like all new growth that has gotten like a lot bigger. So yeah, I'm not sure what my plan is with this one. I just don't like the plastic. It's very wobbly. I tried to repot it and fix it, but I just, I just couldn't. So, but yeah, we'll see what my plan is with that one. Here in the front, this is my Monstera Stanleyana Albo. And I did put this one on a thickly pole, which I'll have to extend soon. This was grown from a single cutting and I have a few vines in here. I chopped this plant back to propagate and it activated like five or six nodes and it is climbing and growing very well. It has lots of roots into the pole already. So yeah, I have a couple leaves that are like a more like creamy color here that has some more white on it there. But yeah, I'm really excited for this plant. I think Monsteras, I just love Monsteras, but this one is climbing and growing pretty fast now. This pole here is my philodendron at Camposport Tawanum. It is finally growing a lot better now. This is the latest leaf. And again, it has this beautiful tone and color. I don't know if it's really picking up on camera that well. It is so beautiful. Once it gets mature, it gets these like little bunny ears. <laughs> it is having another new leaf here. And I do have several vines. I chopped my plant, so hopefully those other ones will start growing. But this is the lead vine that took off before the rest. But I love the leaf shape and everything. I think the color is beautiful. I pulled out my Maranta here on the bottom. This is the Maranta that I rescued on my channel. Well, this Maranta is my oldest Maranta, but it ended up being stressed after I moved and lost several leaves. So I did like a rehab on it on my channel and it's growing back nicely. It is filling in. I'm probably gonna prop it to add back in again at some point, but I have him shoved like in this area because I didn't really have a spot for it and the cats don't really seem to mess with it. So I have several lemon lime marantas you will see. This is my original one, but I do have a lot more. All right, this was it for the moss pole section. Again, I have some other poles that I will show you on those thickly poles and some other areas, 
but this is my entire wall of moss poles now and I love moss poles. I'm just so excited for them. It's definitely like one of the favorite parts of my plant room, just having these poles here. When the sun is shining in from this window, it is shining on these plants and I just think they're just going to appreciate it. And I wanted my poles on this wall because of that reason. The other wall doesn't get as much sun, but I just, I can't wait. I think moss poles are just, I just love them and I look forward to the growth. I am, my goal is to get mature leaves. So I'm gonna keep chopping and extending and they're a lot of work, but they're worth it and I love them. So I think next we are just gonna go around the room. So the next part of this video, I will take you over to my window. I have a pretty long shelf that I will show you the plants. And you did notice I rearranged the bar, the rod that's hanging. I made some changes to that and I took plants down. So yeah, let's go to my window. I think it's a good thing it's cloudy today because the sun is not beaming in and it's not like super backlit. So this is what my window currently looks like. You'll notice the bar up top is spray painted white and my old rods came out to about here and I had plants on this side of it and I had plants on that side of it. So it is very condensed and I have plants going like high, low, high, low. And I think it looks a lot better. I pretty much kept the stand the same. I just have rearranged plants. My plants have grown significantly. So yeah, this, this face is south. So I get a lot of sun in here during the day, especially now that this, this time of year, the sun is lower and I have noticed that change a little bit. So when the sun is out, it gets pretty warm in this plant room with all the lights. I just wanted to give you like a far away picture of what it looks like. I moved all my monsteras facing me, but normally they're facing the window. And I have a couple art prints up there with my girl lay up ahead on that side. And I have a few plants on stands in this corner that I'll show you. And I have my humidifier here. It's pretty humid in here, so it's not running currently. So the plants that I have in this corner, I will show you. So here in the back is my philodendron um, Burl Marks variegated, and it is very beautiful and big. It is giving me all kinds of gorgeous variegation. Look at this newest leaf that just unfurled. Oh my goodness, I have not seen that yet. That is so pretty. But yeah, I have some reverted strands that are growing all green, which is totally fine. I do like the mixture, but I have a ton of variegation, so I'm not disappointed by any means. I actually did chop a top piece off that was all green that I have just rooting in water. But yeah, I love this plant. It is very beautiful, very easy, and it's growing like really, really well. The one next to that, this is my Jose Bueno philodendron. And I grew this from one single leaf and that leaf in front is the still remaining leaf on this plant. And this is the newest leaf, isn't that beautiful? Look at that yellow. But yeah, it is growing so well and it's gotten pretty big. I still can't believe that I grew this plant from just one tiny leaf, but I think it's beautiful. I love the variegation. And the last one here is my Philodendron Squamiferum. It has grown pretty well too lately, and this one has the red fuzzy petioles. If you can see how fuzzy those are. I think it's such a cool plant. I love the leaf shape too. So I have it on like this dried moss trellis. And so I'll eventually have to get a different support because it's going to outgrow it. But I like it. I think it's a pretty plant. I'm glad I have it. And I just think it's really beautiful. And I think the fuzzy stems are so cool. So I think I will start with my Alocasia Friedek. And you guys, I absolutely adore this Alocasia. I have to bring it down so you can see it in full. I just can't explain to you how much I love this Alocasia. This is the newest leaf it just gave me, which is pretty, pretty big. I think it's gorgeous. It has seven leaves currently. I do have several corms that are propagating, so I will add those back in eventually, but I think every leaf on this plant is absolutely gorgeous. This one here has like a little random spot of variegation. I just think it's beautiful. Every leaf is literally perfect on this plant. 
I love it. I have not had any trouble or any problems with this alocasia. It's definitely one of my favorites for sure. Next to him is my Pilea peperomioides. And I do need to repot this plant. I was hoping I can wait until spring, but it's getting kind of lopsided. I do have a stake in here to kind of support this tall vine, but it's still leaning. I'm trying to do my best to keep it rotated. And I have another vine with lots and lots of babies. So it seems pretty happy by the window right here. It does get a good amount of light. And yeah, I just try to do my best to rotate it. But I'm eventually, I think, gonna have to get a different stake to kind of stake it back up like that. So I'll just show you these on the window here. So these are three snake plants. These two are whale fins, and this is a Whitney snake plant. This whale fin is the variegated one, and it has grown a couple new leaves since being in the window. And this is my regular whale fin, and this one has not grown anything yet. It grew one leaf, I think, earlier this year, but it hasn't done anything else. But yeah, they sit here and get all the sun and soak that up. This one's grown quite a bit since being in the window. And over here, I just have random succulents. I'm not really going to go through all of those. I have like a bear paw, a um, Haworthia, a panda plant, and I have a couple lithops there. So, and here's another succulent right there. So just a few, I kind of have, I got the stand off Amazon and I think it's cute to kind of elevate some succulents and I have them in the window so they can get like the best light. And then up top here on this part, so we have my regular string of hearts here that I just repotted and added some props in. So it really hasn't had a chance to fill out yet. Next to this one is my variegated string of hearts. And I kind of twisted some vines like back up so that it wasn't so long, but this one I am going to repot and propagate to add back in. I do want to get it in a different pot, but yeah, I love the variegated string of hearts. I think it's really, really pretty. And I can't wait until my regular one starts to fill out more. I think this is a Hoya lacunosa. Maybe it's, I can never remember this one, but I put it in this cute little sloth pot. I think it's just adorable. It's grown actually so much since I repotted it in here and it doesn't have a drain hole, but it's fine. It's in a pretty chunky mix and it gets lots of light. And I just think it looks really cute. I just think that's adorable. <laughs> so these two are my string of pearls. This is my variegated version. You can see it's starting to fill out. I started this from a really small plant and it has, I did propagate it recently, so it's starting to fill in, but I love the string of pearls. And this is my regular green version and it has grown so, so much. I did repot this on my channel. Yeah, it's growing and filling in very nicely. So I can't wait to see them get long. This one here is my Monstera Thai Constellation. I actually have another one that I will show you, but this is the one that I grew from a node. This is the newest leaf, which is fenestrated. And I do believe it, yes, it is working on a new growth point here. So it's gonna give me another leaf, which is very, very exciting. It has grown so many leaves this summer. It just loves the light from this window. And if you notice these bags on my plants, they're beneficial mites. I have a couple different kinds. Um, I use it as a preventative, like a pest treatment. But yeah, I think it's beautiful. I love Monstera Thai Constellation. I did repot this one recently on my channel into a clear pot and I have it in soul soils and the roots look pretty good on it. I think it's very happy. So yeah, I love Monsteras. All right, this gorgeous queen right here is my absolute favorite plant in my collection. It is dying for a repot. It is so root bound. I really need to upsize it. It dries out extremely fast within like a few days. And this is the newest leaf that literally surprised me. You aren't really gonna be able to see that variegation yet since the leaf hasn't hardened, but it has way more splits. This is the one before that. It has more splits and that yellow is coming through more. Very, very beautiful. And here's another one. This leaf is really cute. And this was an original two leaf prop and that was the first leaf it gave me right here that grew and then it grew this one, this one, that one, and that one. But yeah, it's on one of my old moss poles. 
the plastic. So I am gonna be taking this plant off of here and repotting it and getting a different setup for it. And I'm gonna find a cute, nice planner and get it looking really cute. But yeah, it just really, really needs a repot. But I love the yellow. It's honestly, it's my favorite plant. Next to that one is one of my Monstera albos. I have three Monstera albo plants and I do need to repot two of them, which I haven't done yet. I have one straight on this one growing extremely white leaves. They're very, very pretty, especially that leaf. Look at that. And I have another strand over here that's kind of growing some like half moon leaves. Look at that half moon one right here. That is beautiful. I have a new growth point coming in here. So this one is like, uh, I have several vines. I, I think I might end up just repotting and doing something with this one. I don't know if I'll end up propagating it or getting it staked, but I need to do something with it at some point. I have another leaf coming out here. Yeah, it's just growing kind of crazy. <laughs> so I'll eventually do something with that one. Next to that is my Monstera Oblica and it is kind of growing in and filling in nicely. This was a plant mail from Etsy that from Botanicas that had leaf melting and it's grown in very nicely. This was the original leaf, the one that's yellow. So it's still hanging on. It is giving me a long runner, which I'm not happy about. I got it supported kind of late on a thickly pole. So I'm hoping I might have to end up cutting this runner. And I have another vine down here that's pushing a leaf, this one right here. So I do have a couple nodes that are growing, but I have a feeling I might have to cut this runner, which is sad. I wished I had got it supported sooner so that it didn't give me that runner. But I love this plant. I love the holy leaves. I just love monsteras. I just think the holes and just the overall shape is just absolutely beautiful. Next to that is another one of my albos. And this one I grew from a single midleaf cut. This is the newest leaf. It is beautiful. This leaf is absolutely gorgeous too. It's one of my favorites. It's just so white. And yeah, I have a little stake in here for now, kind of supporting it, but yeah, I'm gonna have to get something different for this plant. But yeah, this is my original elbow and I just adore it. The original leaf died on this plant and the original leaf is actually framed right here. So that's the original leaf and I framed it and it serves as like a little memento. So yeah, this is the growth from that single leaf that I got, it's just beautiful. I think every leaf is gorgeous on this plant. And it did, a lot of my plants did suffer from thrips, if you don't know about that. I battled thrips for about two months in my plant room and a lot of my plants did get affected and all of my monsteras came down with thrips, unfortunately, except for one. But yeah, it was a long battle with them. And this is the other monstera albo. I did chop this one for a giveaway I did, but it is growing back nicely since the chop. So I did chop this plant here and it actually activated two nodes since chopping. So I have this new leaf growing back here and then I have this new leaf growing back here and it's pushing out something else. So yeah, I eventually have to get this repotted and staked differently, but yeah, I just love all of my variegated monsteras. These are the two original leaves on this plant. So this one is yellowing a bit, so that might go at some point, but, and look at this tiny fenestrated one. This is the first leaf it gave me. It's like, it's so little, but it's so mature. I just thought that was so funny. And then back here in the window, so this is my Hoya Shepardii and I have it on this circle trellis here. It does have a few peduncles, but it really hasn't done much of anything. It's grown quite a bit, so I just keep, you know, wrapping the vines around this trellis. They look like green beans is the other name for it. It kind of resembles green beans, but I love this Hoya. Next to that is my Hoya Sunrise, and I will put a video on here that I took on my cell phone when it had all the beautiful blooms. I don't cut the peduncles off because it'll rebloom. But yeah, I love the sun stressing on this Hoya. It is absolutely beautiful. And yeah, I just think it's one of my favorite Hoyas. It loves the light. This one is a big box store rescue. I am filming another video on this one, my ficus triangularis. I'm not a ficus person. I'm gonna see if I can rehab it. It's probably dormant and it probably won't grow until the spring, but I'm just gonna leave it here and see what it does. And next to him is a newer plant. This is my philodendron serpens. 
This is a cutting I got off Etsy that had a fungal infection, you can see. And I did finish rooting it and it is pushing out a new leaf. I repotted this very recently on my channel and it's getting some bright light here in the window and it does have like another little growth point there. Yeah, right there. And this one has like a really, really fuzzy petiole as well. I just love the fuzzy petioles. <laughs> so I can't wait to see that one grow. And then this is my other Thai constellation. It is in here in the window as well. It is pushing out a new leaf here. I don't really want to touch it. And yeah, I love this one too. It's such a baby. So I got this one from a plant shop called Coastal Botanic. They, uh, she sent this one to me. So yeah, it's just chilling here in the window and it's getting some bright light. And it's done really well in my care so far. And then the hanging plants up top. So this is actually my Hoya Bilobata. And a lot of the blooms have fallen off. This one has been blooming for me for like since last April. And the blooms smell like butterscotch. But yeah, this one has always been very happy. This is my second oldest Hoya. And we just literally missed all the blooms. <laughs> But yeah, there's still a couple hanging on. But yeah, I love this Hoya. It's been very, very happy. This one here is my Hoya Rutusa, and this one has bloomed as well. This one has single flower blooms. You can kind of see there's one right here. And I actually had this one on a trellis and I took it down because I kind of like the look of it trailing now. It was kind of growing weird on the trellis. But yeah, I think it's really cute. I think the long stringy Hoyas are some of my favorites. Like this one next to this one, this is my Hoya Linearis. This is one that I recently propagated and I have cuttings in my cabinet and it has a couple another like strands there in the back. So I love like the stringy Hoyas for some reason. I think they're really pretty. And this is my Hoya Polyneura here. It has one node here that shot out. And this is the original vine and it is growing a couple new leaves. I love the polyneura. I want to get the variegated one at some point. I just think the leaves are so cute. So yeah, these ones are getting some bright light in my window and I think they really appreciate it. Next to that one is my big voluptuous string of turtles. This was started from a very small plant. I'm going to put the picture of what this plant used to look like. It was literally so small and I have gotten all this turtle growth. It loves the light in my window. It is like a waterfall of turtles. It is so beautiful. I love the string of turtles. It's one of the only peperomias that is happy under my care. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of my favorite like string of plants. So that was all the plants on the top row and the hanging baskets. So now I'm going to show you a closer look at the plants in the middle row and the plants on the bottom row. This alocasia is my alocasia maharani and it is growing very nicely. This is the newest leaf it just gave me taken a long time to get to this point. It has several leaves now and I just love alocasias. This one has like a really cool like mottled texture. A lot of alocasias have like this cool texture that I love. Next to my Maharani is my reg regular dragon scale and this technically is a variegated dragon scale. You can't really see but this leaf here does have some variegation on it. It's really it's really hard to see. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to make that variegation out. It's not like prominent variegation by any means, but it is it is there. And I did have some corms that I took out when I repotted this plant. So I'm hoping some of those corms can grow some nice variegation. But I, I love the dragon scale. I just love like all of them. I just think the texture is so cool. Next to that one is my black velvet. I recently repotted this one on my channel and I added like several corms in. This is the last original leaf that was left. And so all these little corms, hopefully that I added back in will grow and fill this pot out. This has definitely been my hardest alocasia, but it's been doing well since the repot and I can't wait for this to grow. This ginormous one up front is my alocasia capria. Look at this leaf, you guys. This is my hand. This leaf is humongous. It's probably about 10 inches, I think, when I measured it last. It is humongous. <laughs> I love this alocasia so, so much. You can't really see the cool, like, colors until um, my cat is, like, bugging me. What do you want, Chai? <laughs> You can't really see like the color on it, but it's grown back nicely. I have five leaves on it currently, and it does have a growth point here. So I'm gonna get another new leaf. I'm really excited to see how big that one's gonna be. Cause this was the leaf, um, is that that one? 
or let's see. Yeah, this was the leaf before I repotted it and I knew it needed repotted because it was really small. And the size difference, you guys, is literally insane. So this was before the repot and after the repot. So I don't know, I don't think I need to upsize it since I just did, but I'm gonna see and wait till the size of that new leaf comes out and then um, we're gonna see how, how it does. But I love this alocasia so much. This next one is my silver dragon alocasia and I had combined both of my alocasias into one pot and I do have a couple corms that I added in. You can kind of see one on that side there, a little baby. So yeah, I have lots of new growth and I, I do have some couple corms like it's given me that I need to take off. but. Yeah, I hope to add some more in here and fill it out nicely. It's done well since I repotted them both in here. Next to that one, this is my Philodendron Gloriosum. Look at that new leaf. This plant has a long history on my channel. This plant came down with thrips pretty bad. And I just sort of have like struggled with this plant. It's been with me almost two years and these, these newer leaves are very nice. These three are all after thrips. So I'm very excited to see it like growing back for me. It has been a difficult plant, but yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to see it where it's at. And hopefully I can just get it growing big and happy one day. I love the veining on it too. And then this alocasia here is my alocasia poly. I have lots of leaves on it. And I think I do have, one of these was a new growth point. I don't remember which one now, but I have some baby corms that I added in that are doing well in here too. Yeah, I just want really full bushy pots of alocasias, so I've been working on filling them out. I think the poly is pretty unique. I love like the veining on it too. It's very prominent and kind of dark and mystic in a way. I think this alocasia is pretty cool. This bottom row here is a lot of calatheas and marantas, as you can see. So this one down here on the end, this is my variegated maranta. I don't think I really need to move these at all, but you can see this is the Kershiovana, also known as the rabbit tracks, but I love the variegation. It doesn't have as much variegation on, on this plant. So if I ever find one that's more variegated, I'm probably gonna buy it. So I'm hoping I can make it more variegated down the road. I did propagate this one to add it in to make it full, but hopefully I can just find one that's more variegated. This next one is one of my red marantas and it is pretty root bound. I need to repot it soon. At night, like most of the leaves will like start folding up so it looks more full at night, but a lot of the leaves are kind of down. So it looks kind of, doesn't look as like full and bushy, but I love the marantas. I think the color on this one is beautiful. I love the veining and everything. Next to that one, this is my rattlesnake calathea and it's grown quite a bit since I've had it. And this is the biggest leaf there up on top. And it's done really well in my care. I hope I can keep it happy and keep it growing big. And I'm just excited to like continue to see new growth on it. This one is my favorite Maranta. This is my silver band. Look at all the happy flower blooms. I think the tone and texture and the like silver banding on this plant is just absolutely beautiful. I don't know if it's really picking up on camera, like how beautiful this plant is. At night when it starts to fan out more, I think it just really showcases the leaves and the colors a bit more. It's definitely like my favorite. Did you see that leaf move on its own? They do that sometimes. <laughs> this one is my Stromanthe Trio Star and it's grown quite a bit. I think the underside of these leaves are just gorgeous. They are like a bright pink color. Do you see that? absolutely stunning. <laughs> I love this plant and it's grown nicely for me. I can't wait to see it big and full one day. It has grown very, very well, but I'm just excited to see how big it can get. And this next one I talked about recently, this is my Calathea Makoyana. It has grown back from literally nothing. It was a pile of dirt. It got spider mites two winters ago and I cut it back completely. It took a while to regrow and this is where we're at. It's got a lot of big healthy leaves now and I love it. It just is sentimental to me because I did grow back from nothing. Yeah, I just, I just really adore it and I think the leaves are beautiful. The underside of these ones are very beautiful as well. You can see kind of that red tone there. So yeah, definitely one of my favorites. This boy just wants cuddles right now. He just won't stop. He's pawing me the whole time over there. 
Oh, I know. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the uh, tour so far. I am, I feel like I've barely touched the surface on my plant collection. There's so much more. So I'm gonna take you to this corner behind me and then we're gonna go through this plant shelf here and I'll give you a look at all the plants I have on there. And then we're gonna move to my cabinet and then a few other various areas throughout my home. So I hope you're enjoying my collection so far and yeah, let's continue. So this corner here, you may notice this shelf is the exact same. So this side of the plant room looks completely different. This shelf was behind me where my poles are and so I moved it over here and I just switched the light up above. And this shelf here I kept the same and I did take a shelf down here where I had trailing plants so that is gone. And I removed the grow light lamp up there. So I don't have technically a light in this corner, which I think is fine for these plants. And I move my big monstera here. It has its own special light. And I have some Calathea and Maranta and a ficus there on the bottom. And the biggest thing with this corner is I move my Brazil philodendron to the wall over here. I did have it trailing on this other side, but I took it down. And so I'll start with this one. So this is my philodendron in Brazil, and I've had it for a while, and one strand on this plant grows all neon, which is kind of cool. And I have a little string light there attached to one of the vines, but it's all the way up, and yeah, it's filling out nicely. I actually just hung it here and repotted it, so I put it into an eight inch, so it should be good for a couple years. And I can lift that up to dump out the water. It is sitting on like a saucer tray, so I can water it fully and then let it drain and then I'll just empty it out. So yeah, I love the look of it trailing up. I think it looks really cool. So here in the front, so this is my big Calathea orbifolia. It was severely attacked by thrips. So a lot of the leaves are a bit damaged on it compared to you know what they were. But I do have some new growth coming back. It has pushed out a couple leaves. Some of the leaves grew in wonky since having thrips, but for the most part, it looks pretty healthy still and it's happy. So I'm just glad to see that it didn't completely die since having thrips. This is my prop box. I'm not gonna go through there, but I just have it stuffed here in the corner for now. I am gonna go through that for a video at some point on my channel. And then I do have another baby rescue Calathea orbifolia that I rescued at the same time as my ficus. So I have not shared that one yet and it's still like rehabbing. So hopefully I can get it to grow for me. But yeah, I just have them sitting back there for now. And this is my big Maranta Rabbitrax, my Maranta Curciovana. I recently propagated it so it doesn't look as full as it did. I should have waited till I did this video, but it was really, really full and bushy. I actually had it in my bedroom and it kind of got a little unhappy. So I moved it back in here a couple days ago. It just seemed overall kind of sad being in my bedroom. So I didn't want it to get unhappy. So I think it likes it better being like warmer in my plant room. And this is my Ficus Teneki. You can see there, it has three vines total. And I moved it over here so it could share some of the light with this Monstera from the grow light. Cause these plants really do appreciate a lot of light. It didn't really grow that much this summer just because I had it in a corner and it, and it didn't really get enough light. But it's my only, like technically my only Ficus but I like it. I love the variegated pattern on the Teneki. And this is one of my Monstera Deliciosas. I have several. And you know what's funny is I was telling my Instagram that I'm like, I did not give this plant enough light over the summer because it only put out one leaf. This was a big box store rescue, by the way. And so I moved it under this grow light here. And I swear within a few days, it literally encouraged a new leaf to pop out. Do you see that? So I'm gonna have a new leaf on this plant, which is really exciting. All I needed was to just give it some light. And yeah, I, I will go into more details about like lights and stuff in my part two of the video, but I think it's really appreciated having more light. And this is a tree branch that I initially was gonna use for my hanging plants, but it didn't work out. So I put it in my Monstera. And this shelf here is actually all Syndapsis plants. I put every single one in my collection on this shelf. So I think it's cool to have like a separate area of those plants. Up top is the one that is the biggest, the one that is trailing. So that's mostly an Argerius, Argerius, or however you pronounce that. 
And I did combine it with my Silvery Ann. You can't really tell because the Silvery Ann part isn't really that silvery. You can see a couple strands that are silvery. And then the Argerius one kind of looks like that. So I did combine the two. This big one here is my Exotica. Look how big and beautiful those leaves are. I just think the color of those leaves are gorgeous. I love this plant. Some of the leaves do look a little like a silver splash, kind of in a way. I was supposed to have a silver splash, but I'm wondering if I accidentally got some of the leaves mixed up. But it is an Exotica, so it's beautiful. I love that one. This one is my Trubii Moonlight, another Scandapsis that I absolutely love. And I did take some cuttings that I have um, that I propagated and I have in a separate pot. This one is my new Platinum. This was the import from Root Greenhouse. It is growing some new leaves for me. There's a couple vines that are growing. This one was a new leaf in my care. So technically it's only had one new leaf, but it is growing a couple more. I just love that silvery blue color. I just don't think you can beat that color on a plant. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And here is my Trubii cuttings that I potted up. They're back in here. And this one is my Silver Lady. You can kind of see the pattern on that one. And here's another pretty leaf. It is giving me a bit of a runner as it's trailing down though. So I'm probably gonna end up like cutting this off cause it's getting like really small. So I'll probably cut and propagate this to fill this pot out. I honestly might cut it like all the way back here and then propagate these. So I'll probably do that one day. This is one of my favorite Scandapsis plants. This is my Satin Jade or Jade Satin. I think the dark leaves are beautiful. I really want a dark form but I love this one. I just love the pattern on those. Like, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's so, so pretty. I have some props here. As you can see, there are a bunch of Exotica and I think I have just some various props rooting in water. And this one is another Exotica here. It's another small plant. This is my only air plant. I forget the name of this one. But yeah, it's been doing well. I will like water occasionally and I just keep it in this cute little like moon, half moon pot. So yeah, I just have him sitting right there. This section might be a little bright just because of the grow lights shining. So hopefully you can kind of make out these plants okay without it being too washed out. I think I will start on this section. So down on the bottom, I have some props. Those are my painted lady props and they're growing back from nodes. I actually need to get them potted up. I have like four in there. So I'll probably do that at some point. This Syngonium is one of my newest favorites. This is my frosted heart. It is very, very beautiful. I don't know if you can make out like that color. The veining is just so cool on it. I don't know if it's really picking up that well, but it is getting quite tall. It's on that like dried moss trellis. And I think it's very beautiful. I don't know if it's really even picking up that well. This is one of my pink princess philodendrons. It has a lot of pink on it. I'm very lucky with this one. And I think it's a beautiful pink princess. I have some other smaller ones but this one is definitely, it has the best color. I think the pink on it is just really, really pretty and I'm just lucky to have such a beautiful one. And this philodendron is my El Choco Red. It's definitely one of my favorites as far as color goes. This is the newest leaf that it gave. I just think the color on that is beautiful. It's just very striking, very, very like bold. I don't really know how to describe it. And the back is like a beautiful red color. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, I love this Philo. It's been a little bit of a difficult one um, once I potted it into soil, but now that it's been stabilized, it's been growing well for me. This shelf here is one of my favorites because it's just so cute and has like a bunch of cute like little plants. And I know it's hard to see with the lights, but let me try and show you some of these. So this is one of my pink princesses. This is one that I completely chopped back and the pink is coming in nicely. So I do have another little growth point coming through on that one. And I do have another pink princess here as well in the back. 
And I'll show you that one. This one I got from Coastal Botanic as well, but it's not like, it's not super pink yet. So I'm hoping, you know, with time and light, I, I can get some pink on that one. This is my new one that I just purchased. Isn't it gorgeous? This is my Sorderoy. So it's still in moss. I haven't done anything with it since I just got it, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to get big leaves on this plant. I think it's stunning. I have two Florida ghosts here. I'll just show you this one. This one is very ghosty. Isn't that beautiful? I love the creamy white leaves on that. Look at how pretty and this cute little cat vampire mug from Target. I have all kinds of beautiful leaves on this plant. This was actually grown from a node, so I'm very proud and happy of this one. And then this is my other one. This is actually the original vine that I chopped completely back, and this is a new node growing. And so that's the growth I have coming back on it so far. So eventually I hope to grow this plant into what it used to be before I chopped it. So yeah, I just love the color on this one. And this beautiful one is my variegated alocasia fried egg. I did pot this up recently into soil. And so it has three leaves left. One did yellow and die from the repot, which was bound to happen. And then I did just cut one off because it was gonna go eventually. And I wanted this plant to preserve energy on growing new leaves and not trying to keep old ones alive. So it does have three left. I do have a little bit of discoloration on a couple leaves and I think it's just trying to acclimate and adjust to my space and you know, getting used to being in soil. But this is the newest leaf and it's gorgeous. And I do feel like it is gonna push out another one soon. And I do have a couple corms of this growing in my cabinet. So I'm very lucky and very thankful to have one of these plants and it's just gorgeous. I just, I just love it. I love my fried egg and I can't wait to get this one big. I'm gonna unplug that light up top to see if it helps with it being so backlit. Okay, I think that is better. So I unplugged it temporarily just so it wouldn't blind you. That way I don't have to move all these plants. But yeah, that's my Syngonium ball tick there. And it's grown very, very well. It has filled in nicely. I have propagated this plant so, so much to fill it in. This one is my huge Alocasia Regal Shields. There, you can kind of see it better here, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at those leaves. It is just stunning. It is giving me new growth again. And I have a separate corm in there that's growing. It's very happy. I love this Alocasia. It is growing very nicely and very big and very beautiful. And that one in the back is my Anthurium fingers and I moved it out of my cabinet. It's the only Anthurium that I decided to move out of my cabinet because I felt like it was getting a little light sensitive. You can kind of see the fingers on that. It's a pretty large leaf and it's giving me a inflow and then I do have another leaf that seems to have a lot of fingers on it. So yeah, it did yellow off kind of one leaf. I think it was very sensitive to my grow lights. But yeah, I'm gonna see how it does out of the cabinet and see how it responds. But I do really, really love this Anthurium. And then here's the other look at that Baltic Syngonium. You can kind of see it better. Isn't it beautiful? So I have my Hoya Carii Splash here in the front. This one is my Hoya Australis Lisa. And I think the color is beautiful on this one. I love like the new leaves when they come in that pink color and I love like the lime green on it. I have a linearis prop there in the back. It's just in water. Those, no, those are actually in fluval. Propped my linearis and it is growing roots in fluval. So I, I love fluval. And then this one is my um, Hoya macrophylla and it's given me some new leaves and it does have another node here that grew. This one is a new leaf. Yeah, I love this Hoya. I love the leaves and like the variegation on the margins. I just think it's beautiful. This middle shelf is three Syngoniums. This is my Strawberry Ice Syngonium. Look at that pink color. I don't know if it's picking up that well. It is very beautiful. It has grown very nicely under the grow lights. I still get a lot of green, but the pink is coming through and it's very pretty. This one is my Syngonium Pink Splash. I ended up chopping this entire plant back because I didn't like the way it was growing. And you can see how nicely the new growth is coming in. I think it's a beautiful Syngonium. I like that it's a little bit more bushy. 
I did add a cutting in here and I have two nodes growing. So it does look bushy. I don't like how some of them grow straight up, but yeah, if it does get long and kind of how it did before, I'll probably propagate it again. But I think the pink on this one is very pretty. And then this one here is my Syngonium like modeled. It's like a mojito Syngonium. And this one <laughs> looks completely different because I did chop it back. So it's growing like all sorts of cool variegated leaves. Like, look at that. Isn't that so cool? This is one of the newer like, newer leaves. And that one. So I did chop it and propagate it. And yeah, I don't know. I don't really like the way that it's growing. So I'll probably end up propagating it, propagating it again at some point. But I like it better than how it was growing before. It had two really big leaves that I cut off because they were like yellowing and dying anyway. But yeah, I love the pattern on this one. And this Syngonium is my Syngonium Aria. It has the yellow variegation. You can kind of see all the leaves. That newest one is pretty. Yeah, I'm gonna hopefully get this one to fill out nicely, but I love the yellow. Here in the back, I have my philodendron mamia or mame. It's kind of growing back. I chopped this plant completely back, and so that's kind of what's left. I do have another node that I'm not gonna keep, but I'm gonna keep two of them, and hopefully I can get my plant growing back again. And this is my Monster Peru. This is actually my main plant here that was on a really tall trellis that I just recently cut back. So I have a few vines in here and these are all the top cuts that I have propagating in water. And so once these root, I am going to add those back into my main pot. So those are kind of just together there. There in the back is my Syngonium strawberry shake. I grew that from that original leaf there on the bottom. And the variegation is nice coming in on this plant. I do need to figure out probably some kind of better support for it, but for now it's okay. I mean, it is, <laughs> look at all those aerial roots. I definitely need to figure out some kind of support for it and get it like looking a little bit better. I don't know if I'll end up chopping it back. They take a while to propagate and grow. It's been over a year since I first started growing this plant. So I hate to chop it. I think I just need to get it repotted a little bit better. And this one is my Global Green Pothos. I have it on a thickly pole and I do need to probably extend it soon. I just love some of the cool leaf patterns on this one. I don't think I've ever seen one climbing before. So I am curious to know how it's gonna do like climbing for me. But yeah, I started it on here not too long ago, so it hasn't really done too much yet, but I'm excited to see how some of the bigger leaves are gonna look. I'm thinking I should have left the light on now. I feel like you can barely see some of these. But this one is my Florida Beauty. This is the one that reverted. And so I chopped it completely back and this is all the growth that has come in. Everything has been green. So these were all the cuts that I took that have all been green. This was the original top cut. Nothing has come back in variegated. And I have another one back there that is growing all green. So it's kind of like just a wait and see thing. <laughs> I'm hoping I get some variegation back on this one. But if not, I did get one from Root Greenhouse here, which I am afraid this one has reverted as well because the newest leaf in my care is all green. But I'm hoping this one has some color on it and it didn't completely revert on me because that would be really sad if I have two Florida beauties that reverted. So I'm hoping this one from the import is actually going to be variegated for me. Okay, I cut the light back on. I feel like it was washing everything out. So that's the Florida beauties. So up top here, I'm not gonna move these, but this is my Billettier up front right here and he's pretty big. He's got a lot of petioles, a lot of leaves and it's done really well for me. I'm hoping it grows better under more light because I didn't really have it in much light before so it didn't really grow that many leaves this summer but I'm hoping it kind of pulls through and grows a bit better for me. But this is my um, Begonia Maculata there. It did come down with thrips so it did kind of have some stunted growth there for a while but it is growing back and doing better since having thrip. So I'm not a begonia fan, really. I was gonna get rid of this one too, but I do like it. I'm not ready to get rid of it yet. So we'll see how it goes. And this one is my variegated micans. 
This is one that I cut back on my channel. This is like the halo version, I guess. So it has like these weird leaf patterns that you can see. Look how interesting that is. So I have it on a thick leaf pole and I have two strands in here and it is rooting into here very nicely. So yeah, I'm curious how it's gonna grow climbing, like how the leaves are gonna look. It is a very interesting shape to a mica, just the variegation pattern and everything is just kind of interesting. But yeah, we'll see how it does. And then the other one back there is my philodendron birkin. I'm not like, I like it, but I'm not like super in love with it, but I'm not ready to get rid of it. I, I feel like I still like it enough to keep it. So I'm just gonna see how it does and how I feel about it like come this time next year. But yeah, I do love the variegation. I love the leaves and I love the pattern. So I'm just not ready to completely give that one up. This uh, shelf here, this is a little Hoya Australis prop in here. It's just in moss. I showed you this one already. That is my other begonia. It's an angel wing begonia. And I did recently chop it. It's a top cut and I'm gonna get rid of the base. I I didn't really want to keep this begonia, but I figured I would just take a cutting and see how it does. I don't know. I might eventually get rid of it. I'm just not a begonia person. I think the angel wings are pretty, but for some reason, I'm just like not a fan of them. These are some more props. This is a Syngonium elbow prop and another Syngonium like modeled um, the mojito prop. So once these root, I'll probably add those back in. This one is my variegated Peru that started browning again. So it's been very stubborn. I've tried to grow this plant like three times. It did give me a new leaf that you can't really see the variegation yet. The variegation takes a long time to even be noticeable, but they just brown very easily. I don't know. I feel like something is like wrong with that plant. And this is the top cut of my silver sword. It did like yellow on me recently. And so I propagated the top cut and it is starting to grow back, but I don't know really what happened with it, but that's all that's left. And yeah, it was pretty thirsty. So I gave it water. So it's a little bit droopy, but yeah, we'll see. I, I love the silvery blue. That's kind of why I got it. This next shelf, we have my beautiful Hoya Crimson Queen here in front. And there's actually another Hoya mixed in. I, I repotted one on one side of the trellis and then this is the other one. And I forget the name of the other one now, but I can't remember. And so I did change out the trellis recently because I had it on a bigger bamboo trellis and I just didn't care for it. And let me slide that one back. This is my Hoya Pubicalyx Splash. It is very splashy. And I had two other pubicalyx plants that I'm going to get rid of because I only want one and I really like the splash to this one. So I'm not gonna keep the other two. I am getting rid of those. That is my Raphidophora tetrasperma there. That is a new one that I potted up and I just have it on a trellis for now, but it really hasn't grown too much yet. This one in the back is my philodendron silver stripe. I have it on a thickly pole. So I got rid of my hanging basket that I had and I'm just gonna do this one on the pole. It hasn't really grown too much yet. This was a new um, pole that I did not too long ago, as well as this one here. This is my manjula and I got rid of my basket. And so this is the only one that I have now. And again, it hasn't really done much cause it hasn't been on the pole this long. So these are two pretty new ones, but I do want these ones to get like bigger leaves eventually. So I just gotta give it some time to grow. And here on the bottom, this is my Hoya apuvada. It's actually grown quite a bit. I still have not repotted it yet and I need to get it out of the hot pot and repot it soon. But I love the round leaves on that. Now that it's growing, I really, really like it. Yes, yeah, so this one is my Hoya curtisii curtsii, or however you pronounce it. So I just put it on a different trellis and I think I like it better on that trellis. I think it just looks better than what it was on before. So hopefully it'll kind of shoot out those peduncles. I do have a couple on there. They just haven't really done much of anything. And that is my variegated Hindu rope, my Hoya compacta. And it's grown a little bit, not a whole lot. It's a very, very slow grower. And yeah, it'll probably eventually like fold down and trail. And then I have a Pilea peperomioides prop that I added in back there. And this other one is just my Hoya Australis, just the regular green one. 
And that one, uh, one strand of it had this like weird fungal infection. So I ended up repotting it and that's like all that's left. And yeah, I wasn't gonna keep it, but I figured I would just kind of see how it does and how I feel about it. But it's one that I'm not like really in love with, like the other Hoya, like this, the Lisa I like a lot better. And this big one here in the back is my philodendron mayoi and it's really really tall it doesn't get a ton of light back here but it's like the perfect spot for it and i think the new leaves are so cool when they're starting to unfurl i think it looks really cool so yeah this one did have thrips as well so some of the leaves are a bit damaged but i'm excited to see it growing again and I think it's a cool leaf shape and yeah, it has a, like an empty, kind of like a little bit empty spot in here. So I might end up propagating it at one point and adding it back down to the bottom, but we'll see. I think for now I'm gonna let it continue growing. All right, so that is it as far as the plants that are in this room minus this area, my cabinet behind me. So I'm gonna run through that next. It's starting to get a little bit darker, so we are losing light. So I'm gonna try and rush through my cabinet. There's not a whole lot of plants in there. It's mostly anthuriums. The anthurium growth compared to my first tour video, you guys are gonna be shocked. If you go back and rewatch my houseplant tour of the cabinet portion and you see the difference in my anthuriums now, it is literally, it is insane. The growth on my anthuriums are just, they have just exploded, they have gone crazy. I think it's just the mixture of the slow release fertilizer and the grow lights in the cabinet. I don't know what it is, but they have just, they've gone crazy. So let me show you. So standing far back, you can see an overview of my cabinet. And I didn't change anything with my cabinet, so it's still pretty much the same. And so the plant over here is a Calethea medallion. It does have some kind of, I don't know if it's like a fungal infection or something, so it's sort of in quarantine over here. And I'm just keeping it isolated away from other plants. And so far it's doing okay, but I'm keeping an eye on it. But I love the big, beautiful leaves on that one. And this is my Jess Sienna that I had on the moss pole. This is the one I took cuttings from. And so the variegation is very unique on a Jess Sienna pothos because look at that. I don't know if you can make out that variegation. Do you see that? Like, look at the leaf pattern on that. It is just gorgeous. <laughs> I love this one. So I cannot wait to get giant leaves of that. So that is trailing on that side. And this other one over here is my neon pothos and I recently chopped it because it got super long. It was hanging on the wall over here when I had that shelf and I chopped like four or five vines off of it or it would literally be touching the floor right now. So I have those propagating in water. But yeah, I'm just gonna let it grow long again and then probably add those back in just to fill it out more. But. Yeah, it has grown so much this summer. I love the neon pop. Okay, these anthuriums are just massive. Like, look at those. And they're very crammed in here. I'm eventually gonna probably just make this an anthurium cabinet. I might have to end up taking this bottom shelf off once my anthuriums kind of get taller because I just don't think I have enough room for them. And they're kind of very overcrowded up top. And when the leaves get so squished, some of them are really sensitive that if you touch them or they don't have room to expand and grow, they get deformed, which has happened with my crystallinum. They're on the left. So they really do need to be spaced out more and to be given more room because they are very, very squished. So this is my Forgetii Anthurium. Look at that leaf, you guys. This is the newest one. Look at how beautiful and dark and velvety that is. Isn't that gorgeous? It is giving me a new leaf here, which is very, very exciting. And these are two of the original leaves. And here's another leaf and here's another leaf. I was gonna try and pollinate it, but it seems like the pollen just keeps drying up before I can even like collect it. So we'll see, hopefully I can get some pollen. And I love the baby leaves, they're so cute, but they expand so quickly. And they just get massive, like you can see like my hand compared to this huge leaf, like look at that. It is stunning. And this beautiful one here is my Crystallinum and Magnificum hybrid. And you guys, this leaf is 13 inches long, I did measure it. 
and it is like gorgeous. It does have some pollen coming in on this inflow, which I probably should collect. I don't know if I can pollinate a hybrid. I honestly have no idea. This was the second biggest leaf and the baby ones did die off, but it has several other ones in there and probably I'm probably gonna get another leaf or an inflow soon because my anthuriums are just growing like crazy in my cabinet. I just adore this anthurium so much. It's my favorite one, I think. And this is my crystallinum that is just popping off. Do you see this crystallinum? <laughs> Look at all of these leaves on this plant. Like, do you see this? It is absolutely massive and insane. <laughs> and you can just see, like they, they have all literally shot up. It's given me so many leaves at once. It gave me like six leaves at once and then it gave me like another five. It is so beautiful. I love this anthurium. It has grown like crazy in my cabinet. I'm just so impressed by this anthurium. I can't tell you how how beautiful it is. This one is a Calathea ornata. It came down with thrips really, really, really bad, but it is recovering slowly. So I still have it in my cabinet and I'm just gonna see how it continues to do. It did give me a couple new big leaves there since having thrips. So we'll see, I do like this Calathea. It just got like ravaged by thrips. This one is my Hilo Beauty Caladium. It has three leaves and it's only kept three leaves for the longest time. It keeps like killing off the oldest leaf. I honestly don't really care for this it's technically a caladium now. I think it got reclassified. It's not an alocasia, but I do think the leaf is pretty. It's just really long and it only gives me three leaves at a time. So yeah, even though it's pretty, it's definitely not my favorite. And this other one is my variegated, or not variegated, my Burl Marks Fantasy. That's the original leaf here. And you can see all the weird growth. This thing did come down with thrips pretty bad as well. My entire cabinet like pretty much came down with thrips. I need to get it on support. I think I might put this on a thickly pole. I hate to cut and propagate this again because I already did so much, but it's already getting so tall. I should have supported it a while ago, but I don't know what my plan is with, with this one. I actually have some cuttings propagating in there already, so. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that one. These are some Baltic blue props that I'm doing as a project. I have some in moss and some in fluval, and I do have cuttings in my prop box. And this is my queen anthurium. It's my Warwickianum, and it's giving me a lot of good leaves, some newer leaves that are, that are nice looking. That one is very, very nice. It's been a difficult anthurium for me. I feel like I let it get a little too dry and I may have caused some fertilizer burn with it accidentally, but yeah, I love the newer leaves. They're coming in nice. They just seem to get yellow quite often. So I just have to be mindful to keep this one a little bit more watered, I think, and to be a little bit more careful on fertilizer. Uh, yeah, but. I'm glad it's finally like growing a little bit more for me. Okay, I took down my second shelf so you could see these a little bit more closely. So this is my Philodendron varicosum. It is a rehab. I've tried to grow this plant for like two years. It has a long history. I recently put it on a thickly pole and I'm hoping it does better. It has seemed like it's a bit happier being in the cabinet. So I'm gonna see how it does on the grow pole. I think I was letting it get too dry. I had it on a different pole. So that's that's definitely a work in progress. This one is my Clarinervium. That's the newest leaf. Look at how beautiful. It's so dark and velvety. I love like the leaf up here and how cute that is. It does have, this has had a couple inflows now. I probably should try and collect that pollen on that one. And it's got a couple more cute leaves here. And this one has come a long way. It does have another growth point, I think, so it's probably gonna give me a new leaf soon. This is my new one. This is my import from Root Greenhouse. This is a new leaf it gave me in my care. Look at how beautiful it is. So these are the two import leaves here. And again, I have all those videos in my import series on a playlist if you want to see those, but it is growing very, very nicely. I'm really happy to see a new leaf. This is my Anthurium Dresserly that I got from them. And that new leaf is really cute and adorable and gorgeous. This one is my Magnificum. It, it does have a new leaf here. It is very slow growing for me. I've had this as a one leaf, tiny little like seedling. And it gave me a bunch of new like little leaves. So it is working on getting 
bigger. I think it's just gonna take time, but yeah, it hasn't been like the fastest grower and it isn't sizing up significantly that well, but we'll see. I'm gonna see how how it continues to do for me. And this Anthurium is my chocolate Anthurium, like the kind that you can get at the grocery store, like the, with the red flowers. This one has a bit of a flower there and it has like really dark leaves when they come in. It's just, I think just a standard regular Anthurium. But yeah, this one had thrips too, pretty bad. But yeah, this flower has been pretty active for a while. I don't, I was never able to collect any pollen. I think it's just now finally giving me some pollen. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in love with this Anthurium, but I am just going to keep it for now and just see how it goes. So we'll see. I, I'm not ready to give up on it yet. I'm going to run through this bottom shelf very, very quickly. So these two containers are Alocasia Corms that I have in Fluval. They are doing very, very well. I'm starting them in little containers of Fluval and then once the leaf gets big, I'm transferring them out. So I love growing alocasia corms. And I have a Hoya Chelsea, I believe, that one there. It's been in my cabinet and it loves being in my cabinet. I'm having some new growth there. I do have a McCoats Patola, a Jewel Orchid that is coming back from having thrips. It had thrips pretty bad actually. So yeah, it's, I tried to propagate it, but most of the propagations died when I added them back in and then thrips attacked it. And then I have some Brantianum cuttings back there that I'm going to see how it does growing for me in my cabinet. I do have some cuttings in my prop box that I need to take out, but yeah, we'll see. This is my Philodendron Melanochrysum that I got from Root Green Halls. This was another import plant. That's the import leaf here, and this is a new growth. Look at that new leaf coming in. It is rooting nicely in perlite. I have it set up semi-hydroponically, so I am going to get this potted up at some point here soon. I need to do an import update. Actually, I need to film that. I might film that next month and do an update on that. This one is my variegated Adansonii. I got this from Botanica. It is giving me so many white leaves, you guys. I can't tell you how many white leaves have died on this plant. And it did shoot out a new node, which is this new growth here. But again, like this leaf is all white, look at that. But the new growth is green, but this has, this plant has so much white and it's genetic. So it is very slow to grow because of that, because it has so much white, but I am going to get it on a thickly pole. I think I want to let it climb up one of those. It does need support at some point, but it is beautiful. I paid way too much for this plant, but that's okay. <laughs> I wish it didn't have so much white. And then this one is my Syngonium Wedlandii. It has the dark velvety green foliage. It's just so pretty. I love the dark green on it and the cute little ears it's getting up top. So this one I did kind of cut back from nothing. It had thrips as well. So some of these plants in here are recovering from thrips, but I do love this one. I love the dark green on this Syngonium. We have done my entire plant room now. So now I'm going to move on to a few other areas of my home with some other plants. And we're almost there. We're finishing up here, but I hope you are enjoying so far. And I hope you like, like the rearrangement I did of my room. And I love the setup. I love having all of my poles together. I just feel like it's so nice to have them in one area and it's more spacious in here. I do, I do really like it and I love what I did. It was a lot of work. It was like three days of straight work of like repainting and sanding and yeah, it was a lot, but I'm glad it's done and it's somewhat reorganized. I do still have a lot of like plant care and repotting and stuff to do, but I'll get to it eventually, but we'll see how it goes. I am happy with the plants though, for the most part, and I'm excited for more growth. So let's head on into a few other areas and we'll wrap up this video. Hello. <laughs> so we are in our entryway and here in our entryway, this is my money tree plant and it gets a little bit of light from this window here and it's done okay. I feel like it's grown slowly. It doesn't get as much light as it probably would prefer, but it does okay. And I think I like having this plant here. It's one of my like first plants that I bought at Lowe's, I think. 
and it came down as spider mates a while ago like a long time ago but it is growing and it seems happy this cactus planter i am not leaving here i had it on my front porch all summer and i brought it in because our temperatures got too cold but i haven't cleaned it yet it has like leaves and stuff in there so i'm gonna take a tool and get out all the dead stuff and maybe add a little bit more soil topper to it and probably find a spot for it but i have a bunch of different cactus mixed in here this is a ghost cactus and that's a domino one and a bunny ear cactus and the rest I have no idea but yeah I need to clean it out and fix it it's not getting nearly enough light so I can't leave it here but I just have it here for now until I can take some time to clean that out down on the bottom is another red maranta I forgot to water it one day so it is not as happy as the rest of my marantas but I may not leave it there. I think I don't really like that spot for it down here, but it's doing okay, but I will definitely um, move it and put it somewhere else. This is our guest bedroom. It's a little bit of a hot mess. There's the kitty cat sleeping. And so I moved my desk in here. It wasn't my plant room. You guys may have seen from my last houseplant video that I did, but it is in here now. And the thing that's different here is I added a bar above the window and I moved some other plants in here. These are all three Hoya plants and I might not keep all these Hoyas. I haven't really decided yet. I don't know how well you can really make these out. It doesn't get a lot of light. This is west facing, but it is kind of blocked by our neighbor's house there. And so it doesn't get a ton of light. This one is my Hoya Lachinosa snow caps. It did have a bloom on it not too long ago, but yeah, it's it's still in its original pot. Actually, all these Hoyas are still in the original pot. I got all these from Lowe's earlier this year, oh, well, like a few months ago. So this is the um, Hoya Carnosa Compacta, the Hindu rope. This is just the regular green kind. Again, I haven't repotted or done anything with these plants, so I probably won't repot them until the spring, I think. And the Wayetii over here, I may not keep. I had it hanging in my window and it got really sun stressed, but it's not a Hoya that I'm just like in love with. I don't really like the look of it <laughs> in a way. So I might get rid of that one. I just have it here for right now and we'll see. But I think I'll keep these two. I think once I repot them and get them looking better, I'll like them a bit more. And these are some other cactus I had out front on the front porch. I have not repotted or done anything with them. I'm just gonna leave them here over winter, I think. And then I have another cactus up top. And this one is my Jade Pothos. I might end up putting this one on a thickly pole. I have cuttings in my prop box I have not taken out yet, but this is the original plant. So I might put this one on a pole like entirely and then just get rid of this extra plant. So we'll see, I haven't decided, but I do, I think, want big leaves of this one eventually. This shelf on the opposite wall was in my plant room. And so we just put this here for now. And it's mostly just some props. I have props and water. These are all cuttings I took off of my pothos plants. I have one Scandapsis cutting in there. And this little pot over here is some cuttings and water. I have some string of hearts rooting in moss. This one is my Adansonii. This is the bottom half of my pole that I chopped. So I have it in a separate pot. I took it off the pole because I didn't want a second pole growing since my pole was doing okay. That is my variegated burl marks. Strands that have reverted, I have propping in just some water. You can see variegation on the stem, so it's still variegated and it could, po could possibly grow variegation. Those were just like the green ones that I just decided to cut off though. And this one on the end is my lemon lime philodendron. And it's one that I repotted on my channel. And I don't have a grow light set up here for now, but I am gonna get some light set up in here because it is like very, very low light and these plants will not grow if I don't provide them with any light. Yeah, I'll probably just use this for some extra plants or props just kind of randomly to put in here just to kind of save space in my plant room. getting a little bit dark but this is our dining area and 
A lot of my plants that were outside, I did bring in and I'm gonna house in here over winter. I do have a few plants left outside that I'm gonna leave out there and hopefully they'll do okay. I just don't really have enough room for them. But this is what I currently have in our dining room kind of set up and then I'll go through these. This is my big Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. I've had her here all summer. She's grown, but she hasn't grown like a whole lot. I honestly think she would do better in my plant room where it's getting south light, but I don't know. She's kind of just doing her thing. She hasn't bloomed for me yet. It's my oldest Hoya. And in the window, I have a snake plant prop that I need to pot up. Look at all the roots on that. <laughs> and it has the pup there. I have some Peperomia and Maranta props in this one. This is my pink um, lady Peperomia. I was like very sad and all that new growth in the middle is new since putting it over here in this east window. Peperomias do not get along with me. I had this plant looking so pink and so pretty and then I feel like a lot of the leaves just kind of went downhill. And yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> so it's there for now. This is a Calathea Rehab that is in this plastic bag. So it, it is just gonna hang there. In the corner, I have two snake plants. These were both outside on my front porch. I repotted them both and brought them in for the winter. This is my Sayerai and I have another one back there. This is actually my oldest plant and it's grown so much since being outside. It was the first time being outside this summer. So lots of new growth and I love the color on the Sayurai. I forget the name of that one, but yeah, this one is very beautiful. And this long trailing plant is another philodendron micans. Look at how long and beautiful. It was a lucky find earlier this year and the, the vines are actually really long and touching the floor, but I keep piling them back up so the cats don't like get in there and mess with them. But I eventually need to propagate this plant probably, but I do like the look of it trailing and I don't think I'm ready to cut it yet. It did come down to spider mites not too long ago that I've treated. So yeah, it's just gonna hang there I think and I think I'll keep it pretty long. This one was outside. This is my Dracaena marginata and I brought it in for the winter and I repotted it before I brought it in. And yeah, it's like tripled in size since being outside this year. I think it's really like just being outside. So it's grown so much. So hopefully it kind of stays happy this winter. It is getting some light. So I have two monsteras here and I have a grow light set up to give these plants some extra light because these were both outside as well. This one is a new Monstera. It's giving me two new leaves and the fenestration on these new leaves, you guys, is gonna be insane. <laughs> um, I, the only reason I got this Monstera at the big box store recently was because I had some random spots of sport variegation that is barely even noticeable. See, I don't even know if I can find the leaves that they were on. Oh well. So yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have bought it. It honestly was probably a waste. And yeah, these were like leaves that were, came with the plant. So these will be two new ones in my care, but they're gonna, it's very mature, like very fenestrated. So if anything, I did get like a pretty healthy, I feel like Monstera anyway. And this other Monstera is one of my older ones. I did repot it, but it got a little sad since I removed that moss pole. I kind of messed with the root system quite a bit. And then we had a bit of a cold front come through outside. It was still outside and I think it didn't like it. So some of the leaves are a bit sad on it, but overall it's still pretty happy. And it's, it's obviously leaning towards this grow light because it just loves the light. This one is another one. This one had thrips outside and what I did was I took some cuttings and I propagated in water. And this is like my oldest, actually my oldest Monstera, but it's my most juvenile one. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with these cuttings. I didn't want to completely get rid of the plant, so that's why I saved some cuttings. And then I have all these Monstera deliciosas. So I don't know what my plan is long-term with all of these. I'm probably going to get rid of some, but for now they're just hanging out. This is my Marble Queen, my trailing basket. And this is the same Marble Queen that I took cuttings on to do on my moss pole that I have in my plant room, the one that's really big. 
So this is the original plant and I love the variegation on this one. I have a lot of like whitish snow queen leaves and a lot of marble queen leaves. So yeah, I'm just letting this one kind of sit here. I just don't really have room for it in my plant room. On the bottom here is one of my big, beautiful lemon lime marantas. It is absolutely gorgeous. I do have a couple more. So this is the second lemon lime that I've showed you. Yeah, it's really happy in here. It's growing well. It just, I guess, likes this spot. So I'm just gonna leave her there. This is my staghorn fern that I had outside and I'm just gonna house it here over winter. I didn't wanna hang it on the wall. I just figured I would just kinda sorta hang it like this. That way it's getting a little bit of light and I can kind of check to see when it needs watered when the moss is dry. So I think it'll be okay here during, during winter. And this is another neon pothos that I got as a free gift. And yeah, I just have it right here for now, but I don't know what I'll eventually do with this one. I might not keep it cause I really don't need to, but we'll see. And yeah, I really, I think that's all the plants in this little corner. Yeah, it's very crammed. The cats haven't really messed with this corner. I was kind of worried. I brought this bench in from outside because I was gonna put some more plants that were out there in front of this window, but I decided since I found thrips really bad on one of those outside plants that I wasn't going to bring any more in. I'm not gonna go outside and show you, um, but I have a banana tree, I have a palm, and a ponytail palm. Those are the three plants that I have left outside. And I had an alocasia out there that was covered in thrips, so I chopped it back, and I'm just gonna leave the base out there, and yeah, I'm not gonna bring those plants in. They're too big, and I'm worried they might have pests, so they're just gonna survive the winter out there and hopefully they'll do okay. This is our master bedroom and I have a few plants in this corner. So this is north facing and it doesn't get great light. So on the table here, I have another lemon lime maranta. And as you can see, it's very, very happy. I don't have the humidifier running because it's pretty humid today. This one is my big Tenanthe, like never, never plant. It starts with an O, but I'll put the name on the screen. I had this one in my dining room, but because I brought all those monsteras and stuff in, I moved it into here and it doesn't seem to mind being in here. I was worried it was going to yellow or drop leaves. Um, but it is pretty happy and not really that finicky. So I'm gonna house it over here during winter and then I'll move it back to my dining room once spring comes. I have a cheap grow light set up for these plants just so I can get some light cause it's sort of dark in here. And some of these aren't the happiest since being moved in here. I have, these are all props off of my big Maranta. And then I have another Maranta. I think I let the soil get a little too wet cause I have some yellowing. That's a Tenanthe here as well that isn't the happiest and this maranta i'm not really sure what happened with them i think the soil just got wet for too long and kind of yellowed but i'll keep an eye on them we'll see how they do and hanging is one of my golden pothos it's mostly green it's mostly reverted and i did cut strands pretty recently and once those grow roots i'm going to add them back into the top to fill it out but it's mostly green because it doesn't get the best light so it's kind of like a jade pothos where it's mostly reverted And last but not least is my bathroom area here. And I have my other lemon lime maranta and this one loves the bathroom. Like look how full and fluffy it is. It's so happy in here. Obviously I love marantas. I have another golden pothos up top and it has a couple yellow leaves, which is normal this time of year. It is getting root bound. It's, I haven't repotted it yet. So I do need to take care of that plant. I might wait till spring, but we'll see, but it's it's doing okay in here. But yeah, I might co and eventually combine the golden pothos or maybe even get rid of one, I'm not sure. I have another rabbit tracks maranta from Propagations there, and those are some more props. And then this one is my Calathea rosa picta. I have this one in my plant room and I might move it back in there, but I moved it in here just, you know, to save some space in my plant room and to bring a little bit of extra color into the bathroom because it was a lot of green. But so far it seems to be happy in here. I don't, it hasn't given me any trouble since being in the bathroom. I was worried it would be sad being out of my plant room, but so far so good. So I think I'm gonna leave it in here. Yeah, so these are my bathroom plants. 
So that is it. That is my entire house pant collection. I didn't do a final count, so I'm gonna have to go through when I edit this to see how many actual plants I currently have. I'm not really counting props as plants per se, unless I actually pot them up. So yeah, I'll have to see and maybe put like a final count on here. I do have a collection, a pile of plants that I didn't show you that I am going to be getting rid of. I have some Hoya, some like various plants that I just no longer am wanting in my collection. So if there are plants missing, that's probably why I didn't show them because I am getting rid of them. But I do feel better in this space. I feel a little less cluttered. I feel like plants that are here, I love having for the most part. I still feel like I have plants that I'm not really like, they don't really bring me much joy. So we'll see, I may let more go, but for now I'm overall like, I'm very happy. And obviously my poles make me really, really happy and my monsteras and my calatheas and my anthuriums I love. So I'm really overall very, very happy with my collection. I feel like I've gotten a great growth this summer from the addition of a slow release fertilizer and just the overall environment and the light in my plant room. I feel like my plants have grown and responded really well and I'm really happy with the progress they've made and yeah, I'm looking forward to the spring and next year to see some of the growth. I'm excited to get my poles growing more. I know it's gonna take time, but I'm excited to see like more mature leaves. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my collection and my tour and maybe inspired you to do something different with your plant space or start some plants on a moss pole, but I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you watch this all the way through, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you all very soon.